Good morning. I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for January 17th, 2024. Today we're going to be discussing what we can learn from events that occurred in Germany and Iowa in the last days. I, I think you know some of the story, but let me give you the full picture here because it will go a long way toward shaping what is not just a, a resistance movement, but a fight to establish a new security and development architecture to replace the collapsing, the, the importantly collapsing, unipolar order. Now, there were as many as 100,000 tractors driven by farmers that rolled through the streets of Germany in the last week. And they were joined by many, many other sectors, people in, in production, in, in business, that supported the, the initiatives of the farmers. Now, what was the message from the farmers? Well, it was very straightforward. Without farmers, you would have no food. They were demonstrating for abundant food at affordable prices. Now, how do you get that? Well, among the issues they raised were not only opposing the EU policies and the German government policies, which are undermining the independent farmer and the ability to produce, but also to end war to end sanctions. Now in Germany, what's prevent, and also by the way, the green policy to get rid of that. Now what's preventing that in Germany? Well, first of all, the coalition government, which is made up of greens, free marketeers and war hawks. And this government coalition was one of the major targets of the demonstrators over the last week. But they also targeted the cartels that run the government, that put it in position to, to be in charge of Germany's economic policy. This included identifying by name BlackRock and Vanguard, the land predators, the too big to fail banks uh, tied to the US Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank, the European Union, uh, cartels like Amazon and Aldi uh, that control the German government the U European Union, the UK, the US, uh, especially the Congress and the media. These are all targets of the farmers and the German farmers are figuring it out. They're identifying the real enemy, which is not Russia or China or Islamic terrorists, but the corporate conglomerates which control the governments that are imposing these anti-growth policies and these war policies that are leading toward depopulation. Now, let's look for a moment across the Atlantic to see what just happened in Iowa, where you had a vote which was largely shaped by people from the, the, the rural sector and farmers and agriculture. On the surface, what appears is a huge victory for Donald Trump, and it was. Uh, it, it was acknowledged in some circles that this is an historic rejection of the US political establishment in both parties. You might say a giant middle finger from the people of Iowa to the pundit class and to the uh, political uh, controllers of both parties. Now, you, this came out in the language that was on CNN in discussing the vote. They, they uh, said that for those who buy the line that a return of Trump to the White House would mean the end of democracy, they said the caucus results, quote, will have sown utter dread, unquote. Now, people who say that means the end of democracy, most of them who say it are just repeating media lines. But where does that come from? It comes from the fact that the movement that is backing Trump is rejecting the not so-called democracy. They're actually using democracy to make a point, what they're rejecting is endless war, the enforced poverty, the zero growth policy of the Greens, censorship, lying and hypocrisy coming from the government and the media. Uh, they look at Gaza and Ukraine as endless wars, and we're seeing how these wars are being expanded on, uh, even as voters are voting against them. NATO is moving toward war. The German defense minister called for Germany to become war ready. The, they're also preparing for new anti-Trump scams. 
Uh, this was reported on NBC News that the establishment is preparing the way to use the legal cases against him, but also to organize the so-called leading figures in the military and intelligence community to run something similar to what they did with Russiagate, which if it's not able to get rid of Trump, will at least tie his hands. Now, the people who are giving this giant middle finger to the establishment, here's the question for them. Do you know what the alternative is? Do you know that there's an alternative being shaped even as there's a rejection of the failed policies of the establishment? Now, this is centered around the diplomacy of the BRICS, led by Russia and China, supported by many of the former colonial nations of the global south. And there are conferences daily, um, summit meetings, new agreements being reached on economic cooperation. And the basis of this is the commitment to invest in what Lyndon LaRouche described as physical economy. That is infrastructure, transportation, energy, water management, and so on. The investment in scientific research and development, uh, machine tools, the related uh, Mittelstand, that is the sector of entrepreneurs and small shops who use their scientific capability and technological capability to transform industrial production. And to do this, you need credit for production, not credit to bail out speculators. What we're seeing in the United States now, as admitted by Jerome Powell in the last couple of days, is the move away from quantitative tightening, which was the raising of interest rates supposedly to dry up inflation. They realize now that there's not enough liquidity to keep the bankrupt companies in business. So now they're gonna lower interest rates, return to quantitative easing. So you're caught between two policies, neither of which work because they do not address the needs of the physical economy. They address only the needs of the speculators who are facing drastic situation of uncontrolled debt and the deindustrialization, which deprives the companies of the products they need to, uh, to finance the debt. Now, these new agreements include discussions between Iran and Saudi Arabia, both of which are new members of the BRICS and had a rapprochement uh, organized by China. Russia and Iran, the Indians who are meeting not only with the Russians, but others to uh, work out new agreements on uh, physical economy. Uh, China, the foreign minister was in Egypt and now in Tunisia. And then on top of that are the endorsements of the South African initiative, uh, charging Israel and Netanyahu with genocide, which has now been endorsed by the Organization of Islamic Countries uh, countries such as Brazil, Colombia, Malaysia, Pakistan, Turkey, Colombia, even Belgium. This is a break with the war policy. <clears throat> now, the, an example of this rejection occurred at Davos, of all places, where the World Economic Forum is meeting uh, under conditions of blizzards and large numbers of escort services. Now, there's an attempt there to push the so-called Zelensky peace plan, which is essentially Russian surrender. Well, there was no adoption of any communique supporting that. And in fact, one of the interesting developments was the Swiss foreign minister said that it will not work without including Russia. And then a former Zelensky aide, uh, Arist Aristovich, I guess it is, Aristovich, said what's needed is a, quote, all new security system for Europe, unquote, which must be discussed with Russia and Belarus. Does that sound familiar? That's what Putin proposed in December 2021 before the Biden administration and NATO rejected it and plunged Ukraine into a catastrophic war, which continues in which the NATO countries are continuing to fund and send weapons to the detriment of the people of Ukraine and of Russia. Now, this will be the, a topic for discussion later today in my weekly interview with Helga Zeppler Rusch. The point we'll be discussing is that the world is changing dramatically, even if you're not being told about it, but we'll tell you about it. 
But look at the results of what happened in Iowa and Germany. And join us to make sure that these mobilizations go beyond mere rejection, rejecting what's bad, but toward building a new security and development architecture. So I'll be putting a link to the webcast uh, at the bottom of the description page and also my new article, which will be in the next issue of Executive Intelligence Review on what is the root of the so-called rules-based order. So hope to see you this afternoon. It's 11 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, 5 p.m. Central Europe Time when I'll be talking with Helga Zepp-LaRouche. See you then.